Hello everybody, welcome. Uh, this is Peter Sterlacci with uh, Believe, Become, Be Your Brand and thanks for tuning in for uh, my next edition of Personal Brand Mechanics interview series. And for those of you who are joining this series for the first time, uh, my motivation for this series is really based on the fact that as a cyclist um, I've learned so much from bicycle mechanics about how to fix and repair my bicycles. But I've also realized that I've met some pretty amazing people in my work who I like to call personal brand mechanics, people who have tools and tips and strategies that really help us to build, maintain, and even repair our personal brands. And I'm really excited today to have Kimberly Bordenaro with us because Kimberly was actually one of my motivations for starting this personal brand mechanics series because I, I wrote a blog post back in January about, it was called Be a Personal Brand Mechanic and Tune Up Your Brand. And I featured Kimberly along with um, uh, Jonathan Fields and, and John Falchetto, and, and, and that was really the, ins the, the brand inspiration uh, for starting this series. So welcome, Kimberly, and I'm really happy to have you on our call today. Well, thank you for having me, Peter. I'm, I'm looking forward to today and, and sharing some brand inspiration with everybody. <laughs> Very cool. So speaking of brand inspiration, that's actually my first question for you. Um, you, you basically created a new word for the English language, brand inspiration, and, and I'd sure. like you to tell us Tell us about that and, and how do you use Brandspiration? Well, Brandspiration is something that's been a part of me forever. Um, how did I create it? It really came down to me asking myself, what is it I do and how do I do it? What makes What's my awesome sauce, right? What makes me unique? Um, and for the longest time, since, uh, since I started in business and, and well before I started in business, I found people were coming to me for inspirational advice. They would come to me and say, Kimberly, wow, you know, you really gave me some inspirational advice. And usually that inspirational advice resolved around musical lyrics. Um, I would quote a lyric. You know how, how guys just love movies? Right. And you know that one guy, that one friend of yours that quotes every single movie? Yes. You know, I'm that one friend that can quote lyrics. Uh. And, and so I usually relay that to, to people. I've been doing branding and, and marketing and public relations for a year, so people come to me for that type of advice. Putting branding, inspiration, brand inspiration, it all came about. Very cool. It's it's um, you know, it, it's kind of like that word that that really, you know, defines I guess your brand too, right? I mean, it's it's you're all about brand inspiration. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> So, well, you know, I was thinking, um, you know, in your experience with the branding work that you do, um, can you share what you see as one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they brand themselves? One of the biggest mistakes I see people do is they want to be somebody else. Mm -hmm. And they'll start out, a lot of times clients come to me and they'll say, I saw this website or here's a person that I really admire, I want their brand. I've had people say to me, I love your website, can you just recreate that for me? I want, I want my brand to be that. And not really understanding that, and, and in fact I just wrote a, a blog post about it, it's great to swipe ideas from people, use the ideas that you see working and what motivates you or what inspires you, what you like about somebody, but put your own spin on it. Um, I've been seeing this a lot. I, I incorporate a lot of music videos into what I do. And, and so that's really started taking off. And I see a lot of people doing that. It's, I love it. It's great. You know, that's how I relate. But I say, you know, do it in your own way. Find something that, that relates to you. Find your own awesome sauce, right? And, and put that all over the place. And then use the ideas of other people that help propel it if you see something that's going successful. But don't, don't try to copy. Still be an original. Yeah, yeah, that, that's great advice because, you know, he, here even in Japan, uh, there's really a, a, a misconception about branding. When you say the word brand in, in Japan, the immediate reaction is it's kind of creating an image. And right. so it's one of the challenges that I have with, with, with working with people here. It's like, no, we're not trying to create something that, that you're not. I mean, you, you use what is authentic to you, right? Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that, that's kind of like the, the bad reputation that, that, that's out there of, of try, try to fake it till you make it or be somebody else or fake an image and you're absolutely 100% be authentic to yourself. Right, right. Well, you, yeah. mentioned, 
you mentioned that the whole idea of like uh, using lyrics because that's such a big part of what you do and and actually that's initially how I uh, how I discovered you as well because as a fellow Beastie Boys fan um, I was it was amazing how I found someone out there who's using Beastie Boys lyrics in in branding and and your work and so you really have this amazing ability to use lyrics from songs in in your branding and where does this come from I mean tell us how how did this come about and and if you can, can you give us an example of a lyric and how you apply it to branding, personal branding? Okay, so how it came about, like I said, wherever the day go, I became that friend that just quotes lyrics. The reason why that happened, well, first, it probably goes way back to 1992. <laughs> I'll, I'll even date it, right? Um, 1992, I remember um, Red Hot Chili Peppers came out with um, Blood, Sugar, Sex, Magic, right? right? I, think that was, I think that was the one. And then U2 had come out that year, and, and um, uh, with Octum Baby, and we had uh, Guns N' Roses, right? right. With uh, Use Your Illusion 1 and 2. And, of course, the Beastie Boys, right? I think the Beastie Boys, they, their album came out in 94. So it was all around the same time that, that all these great albums were coming out. And... Imagine little Kimberly, I think I was in 8th grade, right? uh, uh, 87th or 8th grade, and um, another thing came out that same year, the washable markers, or at least that was yeah. the year I found out about washable markers, and I used to sit there and write lyrics on my, on my ripped acid wash jeans, right? <laughs> it was the 90s, right? <laughs> so that's what I did. It started off with that passion of, of lyrics and understanding them. Fast forward to, um, it was probably around 2000, um, a little, maybe 99, 2000, I started a, my career early, um, and I was the public relations director for the Miami Beach Chamber of Commerce. I was 21 years old. I was a little girl, and I was out there with the, the good old boys of Miami Beach, right? And so I would have to sit and pump myself up before these meetings because I had this innate ability of marketing and public relations. I knew what I was doing. Of course, I was learning. I mean, I was 21, right? But I had to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of guys, and that's very intimidating. Sure. And so I used to sit in my car, and I would listen to music to pump myself up. And so there's two, two examples I want to give. Great. Uh, kid Rock, right? Ba with Ba. So I would sit in my car and go, and my, my maiden name is Oaks. My name is Kim, Kim Oaks, right? And I would like jam out in my car to pump myself up. Uh -huh. So I would listen to a lot of lyrics and music in my car going to and from work. And I was really into Anthony Robbins. And one day I'm just listening to um, Beastie Boys. It was maybe a few years later. Um, oh, the album that came out, I forget which one it was now. Um, but at, at any rate, I, I'm listening to it, and that's really what I did. I would listen to the lyrics of the song, and it would help me get through my day. It would help me. I had lost my father um, at an early age, and he was my really my inspiration, and, and we had a great relationship. And I would listen to these lyrics to help pump myself up and I would find almost like the movie A Beautiful Mind where things just illuminate in the beginning of the, not that I'm schizophrenic, but like in the movie where he has these illuminations of the mathematical equations. I have illuminations in my mind of lyrics and how to apply that to business and how to apply that to your marketing and branding. So second part of your question. Yes. Um, a, an example of this, we'll go with the Beastie Boys. Um, let's see, got scheme schematics, blueprints on file. You have to have the dreams to make it all worthwhile. And how I would take that lyric and apply it to business and branding, you have to set the vision of your brand. You have to have the dreams that you want to, to accomplish. And then you also have to put the goals and the plans in place of how you're going to accomplish that. So, you know, the scheme schematics, blueprints on file, you have to understand what your brand is about and you have to put a plan into place. That's great. Very good example. And actually, for people who are, who are watching this, um, definitely, you know, you've got to uh, follow and read uh, Kimberly's post because, uh, I mean, often you're, you're writing these posts using the lyric and posting actually the video as well. So what I like to do whenever you post something is I, you know, I play the video while I'm reading your post 
and that's kind of um, it, it's you know it's nostalgic in some ways to see songs you know that uh, you know I grew up with that you're using, as well as how you're using that as 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 part of the for inspiration basically it's, it's really awesome well, so. you know it's, it's also nice because music is so relatable and my target audience tends to be in the gen x the cusp of gen x gen y um so i use a lot of songs that they relate to sure. um and i mean that's part of my generation that's what i know um it, i've found that it relates to so many people that you would just not expect uh chris brogan commented that he loves my um you know i, I had sent him we had an email exchange, and I had said, you know, check this out. Who doesn't love um, Sir Mix-a-Lot, right? Yeah. Because he had written a post about, you know, about how he became successful, and I had written a post about your butt is too big, <laughs> so I used the Sir Mix-a-Lot in there. So it's really interesting because when you find people that are maybe the celebrities of your field or, or, or higher-end people, and then you all of a sudden realize, Wait, there is a way to connect with them, right. and it also goes down to the you know I, I can pass by the janitor and start singing, you know Beastie Boys, right. you know or something, exactly. and they may look at me like I'm crazy. I'm sure they do, but you know, <laughs> music is a great way to communicate with people. It definitely breaks them down. Definitely, right. definitely is, um, and you know I think you know as you you pretty much I think already described really what your brand is all about. But is there anything else that's a brand Kimberly that you'd like to share with us? You know, I, I really look at my brand as, as three main components. You know, the first one is I'm all about playful fun. I, I, I believe that branding is serious, but you, don't, you can still have fun while doing it. So for me, it's about being fun um, and having and playful fun, you know. Um, the second one is obviously inspiration. I really do draw to, you know, to inspire other people, to inspire something within yourself. Um, and, and to take things that would, you normally wouldn't look at and find a way to inspire yourself, inspire your brand, especially with pop culture references. Um, and then the final thing is determination. I mean, I, I, like everybody else, I, I have a story to tell. I have, you know, I have a background. Um, and determination is probably the key of my brand. I'm one of those, I, I just posted yesterday, um, oh, what was that? I get knocked down, but I get up again, right? right. Which is a, a total uh, drinking song from right. the 90s in college. <laughs> <laughs> but that is me. You know, yeah. you can knock me down a whole bunch of times, I'm going to get up. And that's the same way that I feel about my clients. You know, I really love to bring that determination uh, into into the process with them because branding is intimate having a personal brand is very intimate and we all have days where we get knocked down we all have days where we have to get back up again and, and in fact I posted you posted uh, the Japanese version of it of um, fall down seven times right. stand up eight. Yeah. and so I would say that's probably a cornerstone of my brand perfect great oh, it's a, and that's a wonderful Japanese expression to use as part of your brand too so so, well, you know, as you know, I said, as I, I see you as a personal brand mechanic, um, along with other people, and, um, and as I mentioned, that as a personal brand mechanic, you have tools and techniques to help others to really build and maintain their personal brand. So I want you to imagine that someone's brand is a flat tire, of course, I have to use a cycling reference, and how would you pump up their tires so that their brand is ready to ride again? And I, I love your cycling references, by the way. I love the brand Peter. Um, and what that represents. So if I were if I were a mechanic, which I'm not, please don't put me around your car or your bike or anything. It will it will fall apart. <laughs> but as a brand mechanic, I can definitely do that. I would say start with the basics. Um, you know, when I work with my clients, I put together a brand foundation one sheet for them, and it's basically a one page guide that they can review and look at and say, okay, this is what my brand is about. And when you do find that your brand is evolving or it's falling flat in some way, it's best to go back to the basics, especially what, it, what you're passionate about, what your vision is. You know, your vision and goals, they might change over time, and that's fine. Um, but the passions, the values, your strengths are always going to remain the same. Um, maybe you have new, pa new passions, but, but you get what I'm saying. Sure, sure. So go back to your, your brand foundation, go back to the basics, and go from there. See what you can, what you can come about from that, and what, what might be lacking, or what you're not making come through on your brand. In your right, brand. yeah, good advice, and I think sometimes we get so trapped and caught into, 
you know, fixing the things that we're not really good at, right? Yeah. You know, and and we, and it's really, I think, it's just a product of, of, of our culture. You know, we're obsessed with weaknesses and, and trying to fix those when, as you said, it's just like go into really, you know, what you're passionately strong with and, and really make that stronger. Yeah, you know, I'm a weirdo. I love my weaknesses. Um, <laughs> I look at it this way. I, if I'm weak in one area, I'm strong in another area. Right. Um, my husband, he, he laughs at me because I feel, why try to improve everything? Just make what you have even better. And something that is a weakness, just outsource it. You're never going to see me cook or clean. I believe in outsourcing. I outsource to my husband on that. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, but I think that, that's also something with, with weaknesses and strengths and passions and, and about the brand and being yourself and not trying to be somebody else. Just go for it. You know, put yourself out there. People might laugh, but they might also laugh with you. <laughs> Good advice, good advice. Well, I mean, thank you so much. And, and Kimberly, if people want to know more about you, where can they go? Yeah, you know, the best place to find me is at KimberlyFortinaro.com. And you can also find me on Twitter at Brandspiration. Okay, okay. Right, great. Well, what I'll do is I'm, I'm going to, uh, when I post this uh, interview with you, I'm going to also put links to, uh, to uh, your site and to where people can find you. And definitely, uh, I highly recommend that uh, people uh, check out what Kimberly does because she really is all about brand inspiration. And uh, check out Club Brand Inspiration as well. I want to you know, pitch a little bit of that because um, you've got this great, uh, maybe you can tell us, just tell us very quickly what that's about because I think it's a yeah. really great thing that you Club, have. Club Brand Inspiration is a little spin off of, of what I do. I, I am a huge networker, that, that I love networking with people. I have some great resources and experts in my community just like Peter does. And so, in fact, Peter is the, uh, the expert this month on multicultural branding. But so Club Brand Inspiration is a place you can go to to get um, information from other experts, other branding experts, as well as I have a blog over there um, of how-to articles, so how to do things for your brand. And it's, it's, uh, it's a great free resource. Yeah, definitely. Uh, each month a free interview. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if for those who are watching, definitely check that out and and um, and, and use that as an as a resource because um, even you know I found it to be incredibly useful for myself too. So, thank you so much, Kimberly. I really appreciate your time. And um, I noticed your cat woke up back there and <laughs> went back to sleep. <laughs> I have I have my cat Jagger because I'm all about keeping on brand. My cat's it's a sexy perfect, cat. Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Kimberly. And, and and again, for everyone watching, please check out uh, Kimberly at kimberlybordenaro.com. And uh, thanks again, and we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care.